Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk specifically about the eyeshadow tool. This simple tool is actually quite comprehensive and can be used to give your character a wide range of unique eye enhancements. Let's start off with outlining the different sections of the eyeshadow tool to get you better oriented with what goes where. You can see in this image where the highlight, base, lid, crease, outer and inner V and bottom sections will apply to your character's eye. If we go through the individual sections, we can toggle the active checkbox of each part in order to better see how they all layer up to form the structure of the eyeshadow. You'll notice that the powder section checkbox is not active by default. The number of settings in the base section are identical in all the others, so we'll discuss the base first. You can see that in the base texture map, there is a mask that ensures that this effect is only applied to a certain area around the character's eyes. This can be modified of course, but we'll leave it as is for now. In the materials subsection, you'll find all the standard parameters you can expect of the areas for color, range, as well as roughness, metallic, and glow. You can adjust these sliders to see the corresponding effect on the base layer of your character. Keep in mind that these will only affect the base layer of your eyeshadow. Let's take a look at the inner V section next. We'll make it active just over the base layer. Here you have the same standard sliders as the base section that we just went over, however here there is also a blend mode that allows you to do normal blending or lighten blending. This is similar to using the lighten blend mode in Photoshop. Let's move on to the highlight section which is located near the outer edge of the eye just under the eyebrow by default. Again, you'll have the same subsections as base, and we can also go under transform to change the offset of our highlight effect to adjust its position on the eye. We can adjust ours to go right around the outer part of the eyelid for a more enhanced effect. We can then blur it a bit to blend it more into the surrounding base smoothly. We'll take a quick look at the powder section next. The unique thing about the powder layer is that you can apply it to any other section of the eye by selecting the applicable powder range from the drop down menu. If we apply it to the crease area, you won't be able to see it until we actually go up into that area and select the active box. Once that's enabled, you'll see the effect appear. Aside from the range, we also have the powder type. Here you're able to see the default map when you select custom. You can choose from any other sort of pattern to create a really interesting and unique effect on your character's eyeshadow here. Powder also has one more blend mode in Overlay, which is different from Normal in Lighten, in that it basically goes right over top of everything else but blends in nicely as well. We can again go through all the other different sliders under the Powder section one by one, and see how they each affect that layer. We'll use all these techniques in the next section, where we'll create our own custom eyeshadow look from scratch. In this example, I'm going to customize a few things to create a really cool looking eyeshadow effect. We'll go through all the different sections one by one to do so. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the mask map on the base layer. You can find a whole bunch of range texture maps in the range folder under the CC3 template textures. Once this is applied, we'll see the base layer expand a bit to surround the highlight. From there, we'll quickly change the color and blend it nicely into the surrounding skin using the blend slider. Let's move on to the crease section where I'll use the same process to give us a more flared mask for that section and then proceed to adjust the color to something that goes along a bit better with the base. We can continue on to the outer V section and do the exact same thing. This mask is already softened a bit, so you can see it blends in more nicely at the top with the base, so we don't need to do any blending. Again, it's always recommended to try to blend colors together harmoniously, otherwise you risk your character looking more like a clown and less like an exotic warrior or a fashion icon. The rest of the section basically follows the same process, so I'll speed up the video a bit so you can see the results more quickly. Again, the process for most parts consists of replacing the default mask with a custom one, choosing a harmonious color scheme, and then blending nicely into the surrounding effects. When it comes to the powder section, we'll go to load in a custom powder range, and also adjust the powder style by adding in a custom map there as well. You'll notice in this case that it doesn't automatically appear due to the positioning and scale values, so we'll adjust those to get everything in the right place. Once we do, you'll see the cool constellation pattern appear. 
Once we've found the right balance of fading, expansion, and all the other sliders, we can then change the overall blend mode of the entire layer to overlay, which is generally recommended for this particular effect so it doesn't overpower the subtle details of the eyelid. You can see once the blend mode is changed that those details are restored on the skin. That's really about all there is to introduce you to in terms of the eyeshadow tool. There are countless combinations of patterns, colors, and effects that you can apply, but I'll leave that to you to use these basics to explore. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure you check out our learning center as well as our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.